the cameo characters in the background, we use the excuse of the dimensional shell shock to slide a bunch of our favorites and other deeper or more obscure characters uh, to put them in there like just for fun, for fans, because we're fans first. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of PlayStation Underground. You got Tim here. I'm so excited to be checking out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, the Dimension Shellshock DLC. I'm joined by two talented developers from Tribute Games. Uh, thanks for joining us. Frederick Jemis, the game designer. How are you doing? I'm doing good, you? Doing really well, thanks. And Yannick Belzil, scriptwriter at Tribute. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Excellent. So, gosh, I'm so pumped that we're going to be getting more Shredder's Revenge. Um, just to start off with, you know, I, I see we're checking out Yosagi here. I want to talk a bit more about this new character, but I also know this is sort of our first real extended look at the new survival mode. Can you can you tell us a little bit about what makes this mode unique for Shredder's Revenge? Yeah. So the survival uh, the survival mode for Dimensions Shell Shock. Uh, is basically a completely different game mode. And in this mode, the players are traveling across the multiverse from the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in order to assemble and collect dimensional crystals that have been stolen by a mysterious figure. Ooh. And the players travel through multiple arenas where they'll fight hordes of enemies, including even new enemies, and collect crystal shards in order to complete each of the universe's crystals. Great, and I see there's a decision here to be made between uh, looks like a vial of ooze with uh, Rock City's face over it and another power up. What's going on here? So basically, every time you finish a, a combat challenge, you have choice between two rewards. And as you can see right now, the players they picked uh, the player picked uh, perk, and the perks what they do is that they give uh, bonus effects to the players for uh, a set amount of time. So in this case. Uh, it is a speed boost that is equivalent to the uh, the combo strength that uh, the character is doing. So, okay, the, the more hits that you chain together, the faster your character becomes and gets like to crazy speeds. <laughs> nice. Speaking of speed, how is Usagi doing in terms of speed compared to the other characters? Uh, with Usagi, we really wanted to try something different than what we had with the other characters, and. The, the idea that we went forward with is to try to make it more like a, an aerial character. So a character oh, that cool. would be more, uh, you know, better adapted for the, 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 uh, the air attacks and such. So we decided to, oh, but something I think is happening on screen right now. Yeah, Shredder is <laughs> yeah, in there. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> you picked up a vial of ooze and now, um, now we're playing as Shredder, which is incredible. Uh, so yeah, can you play as enemies within survival mode if you choose those power-ups? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yes, you can. Uh, it's something that fans really wanted immediately, like when the game came out. Like, oh, it's called Shredder's Revenge, but I sort of wish I could play as Shredder yeah. or as Bebop or Rocksteady. So uh, we made it like a fun uh, mutation perk that you could use uh, during a game. And because the character is already had so much animations like it, it felt like we could just create a couple more to make them as playable characters within like the the within the gameplay of the survival mode that's awesome it looks great it looks like he was always meant to be playable you know it just like it fits so well and the decisions having to be made here it seems like we're choosing between collecting more crystals to to make it through um and oh then that's it that's crystal that's, complete that's a completed crystal and as you collect crystal, you travel deeper into other dimensions and you face tougher and tougher challenges. Okay. So for here example, it looks like we're jumping into an 8-bit battleground, which is an incredible, bringing me back to my childhood when I first fell in love with Turtles games. Um, and so we're still within the survival mode here, um, but yeah, what, and I'm seeing like, am I seeing like a filter including, you know, on top of this background? Tell me a little bit about this design for the stage. So we decided to, uh, you know, the Turtle games have been with us forever and, you know, uh, we decided to pay an homage to them by just visiting uh, an, an area, in a dim dimension inspired by all of the previous games. And we went all out with, you know, the, the, the screen effects that kind of reflects the old CRT screens. Yeah. Uh, but we can also see here uh, some cool character effects, like a new color palette that we have for our characters. Yeah, it's something yeah. that uh, ever since, like, the first trailer popped out, like, we would see from fans on our Discord, like, uh, 
people already wanted different palettes uh, for the characters and, you know, uh, palettes that were uh, either based on, you know, specific movies or action figures or yeah. other cartoons. So it's something that we've decided, like, immediately we were like, oh, we got to do this. So we decided to uh, put different palettes uh, in uh, uh, in this new uh, DLC version of the game. And uh, there's a, a, a whole bunch of them. And I think the fans will be really happy with the choice uh, of the palettes we have they look fantastic i love the backgrounds like they're so authentic um and i'm hearing a little bit of a sort of 8-bit inspired music there as well is that is that telopes coming back for for this soundtrack as well uh yes he has made new tracks for uh every dimension so that was really ah, excited cool. also to to have more uh, of telopes as music in the game because uh we love the guy that's awesome. Yeah, yeah the, the, a, a few screws loose from uh, the full game was like on repeat for me for, I don't know, a, a solid month. So I'm, I'm so excited for, for more 8-bit tracks. Um, another, another decision here. Looks like we've gone for some more crystals. Yeah, and as you can see also in this stage, you had also uh, new enemies and hazards. So you saw there were the, those uh, foot soldiers with uh, the, the, the large lanterns that can set the ground on fire. And here okay. you have you know unique traps that appear in each, uh, each dimension. So each dimension has new hazards and, you know, things to avoid to mix up the fight a bit yeah we can see some foot soldiers have different masks on which denotes that they might be a different type of foot soldiers and they yeah. might be harder to fight no that's that's really great it seems like this is such a natural evolution for folks that want you know some more challenge from their shredder's revenge experience uh and now we're jumping ahead to um Omni Channel 6, so uh, this is looking like a, a, a whole other dimension. Well, man, these outfits are awesome. April's looking great yeah. in a black jumpsuit. Like, um, yeah, what, what are we looking at here? So in the uh, Omni Channel uh, 6 dimension, basically it's kind of a future dimension. Uh, there's uh, This is uh, something that happens when you travel a bit further into the, uh, the dimension the dimension so it's not a, a starting one it's getting a bit tougher and as you can okay. see we have uh, tougher enemies and as Yannick mentioned uh, we created over you know a hundred more different unique combat challenges but these combat challenges they kind of update as the the game goes on so if it, it, they get progressively harder and we have uh, introduced a notion of having uh, enemy ranks so basically you have enemies that get tougher they have more hp they're more aggressive some of them even have new attacks so the game does you know get a bit more challenging so <laughs> yeah. it's really a test of uh, of skills I'd like to nope. uh, uh, point out that the cameo characters in the background, uh, yeah. both Kerma, uh, the turtle from Shellrilla, and uh, Cuddly the Cowlick from the old uh, TMNT Archie comics, uh, these were characters <laughs> I really wanted to slide in somehow uh, in the game. <laughs> and we uh, used the, uh, the excuse of the dimensional shell shock to uh, slide a bunch of our favorites and other deeper or more obscure characters uh, to put them in there like just for fun for fans uh, but because That's we're fans great. first so it was like we can see fugitoid and armagon like yeah. in the background like seeing also our awesome animators like create these new characters uh, just for an instant was a real treat yeah, that's great to see Fugitoid back there. I know he's important to the history of turtles and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. that's super fun. You know, these the there was the, the the core game for Shredder's Revenge is just like dripping uh, like the ooze itself with references and and, <laughs> and examples of your love for for turtles. And so it's so fun that this sort of dimensional shell shock situation uh, really opens the doors for this. So yeah. um, coming out absolutely. In, in yeah, you know when the, the the first arcade game like was kind of very faithful to the show but then the second arcade game turtles in time was basically just turtles having fun you know it was just a wild ride through time travel and such and this is kind of how we wanted to approach a dlc you know we wanted it to be something uh, that would feel like almost like a sequel but you know that would go further than what we previously saw in the game and that's why we really wanted to uh, go with the multiverse and explore all of these new locations which is also an Again, an excuse for more cameos and little, you know, Easter eggs. But yeah, I, I think it's a good, uh, refreshing uh, experience for sure from the main game. 
Definitely. And speaking of Easter, uh, you know, uh, like Usagi's, uh, his, his move set, I'm seeing now what you're talking about where he is so adept at, you know, staying in the air and kind of, am I seeing him sort of like juggling himself off enemies and bouncing, yeah. like keeping himself in the air? So as I was saying, we wanted, we wanted to unlock a new dimension of gameplay with Usagi, so we really focused on giving him a lot of air control. So basically, Usagi is the only character who can do a, a real double jump, meaning that he can, you know, start a jump in a direction and course correct if he wants, like to get out of trouble or to readjust yeah. for new attacks. But also, he, he is also the only character able to uh, perform his uh, full combo in air. So, you know, oh, other cool. characters will have uh, dive kicks and such, but Usagi can perform like uh, his complete combo. So basically, you can launch an enemy in the air and jog uh, and just, you know, fight him when he's the most vulnerable in air. That's oh, so no, satisfying. That's, that's I can't wait to dive into that. Oh, no, oh. it's not. <laughs> oh, there we go. Well, uh, a, a stunning performance by the players on this. You know, we were looking at uh, pre-recorded uh, gameplay on PS5, but uh, that was so exciting. Uh, Frederick and Yannick, I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us on PlayStation Underground. Um, I'm pumped that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, the Dimension Shell Shock DLC, is going to be out on PS4 and PS5 uh, later this year. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, our pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.